I'd like to welcome ACS members to the American College of Surgeons Pathways to Fellowship Series. I'm Lindsay Kilgore, a breast surgical oncologist at the University of Kansas Cancer Center and an associate fellow member of the American College of Surgeons. The committee has developed this new fellowship pathway series to spotlight surgeon leaders who have championed the pathway to fellowship for young surgeons. The goal of the interview is to help promote the value of fellowship within the ACS and among its members, especially those in subspecialty fields. Joining me in conducting this interview today is a medical student committee member, Haley Nadone. Haley, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Haley. I'm a rising second year at the University of Nevada, Reno. Great. Dr. Rama Morthy, we'd like to begin the interview with you. Would you mind starting talking and telling us a little bit about yourself and your practice? Sure. I'm Sonia Ramamorthy. I am the Chief of Colorectal Surgery at UC San Diego in California. I am about 18 years into my practice uh, here in San Diego. I've, I've um, worked all over the country uh, throughout my training and then uh, my first job, but, but landed here, which is where I did my residency. Um, I have been a member of the college since I was a medical student member, since I knew I was going to be uh, a surgeon. So it's been a long trajectory for me and an association uh, with the college. I am currently our advisory council member and a member of the board of governors of the college. Great. Thank you. We're so honored to have you participate. Dr. Maman, can you please tell us about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Josh Bauman. I'm a uh, surgical oncologist uh, at the University of Nebraska in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I've been a member of uh, the American College of Surgeons uh, since I was a resident uh, at the University of Cincinnati. Um, it's really something I'm incredibly uh, passionate about and feel uh, strongly uh, about as a phenomenal organization uh, for surgeons uh, across the full spectrum of surgical disciplines to be involved in. So um, I'm really excited about uh, sharing more about this uh, today. Great, thank you both so much. So I'd like to start by asking you, what does ACS fellowship mean to you and to your institution? For me, um, it's been part of my career trajectory. My chair uh, took us to the college meeting and introduced us to all the, you know, for me, it was the key leaders in colorectal surgery. And then in fellowship, again, you know, we would take the data that we were doing and present it um, both at college and both um, at my colorectal society. There's been a lot of great engagement more recently about the impact on the national forefront for surgeons, along with Medicare changes, uh, things that are occurring that I want to be a part of, that I want to have a voice in diversity and equity inclusion in the field, you name it. And so the college really touches on things. Um, and represents the house of surgery and, and colorectal, my own specialty, really fits nicely into that. But I would tell you, it's been a huge part of my career. In terms of what we're doing at our institution, I would say the vast majority of our faculty are members of the college. Their fellows, our residents go to the meetings every year. We're very involved in that uh, quality and patient safety meeting that we go to. We look to that for guidance on how we improve patient care and outcomes at our own institution everything about COVID when that, when that was a national crisis to uh, some of the Medicare changes and telehealth, things that are coming down the pipeline. So it's really been our source of communication um, in particularly um, during this last challenging year. That's wonderful. Dr. Maman, do you have any additional comments on that first question? You know, I, I think that uh, the way that Dr. Ramamurthy uh, really summarized the kind of the full spectrum uh, that the college provides in terms of engagement uh, with its members is really spot on. And, and, and as uh, Dr. Ramamurthy uh, kind of alluded to, it changes over time a, a little bit. And uh, being able to avail ourselves of all those opportunities is just an amazing uh, attribute of the college, going from advocacy to education to research uh, is really kind of that uh, full full spectrum. Great, thank you. So how has the affiliation with ACS helped your career path and as your career as a specialist? I can tell you that the engagement of the college has been uh, in very similar ways to Dr. the ways that Dr. Ramamuthi uh, kind of alluded to, been really uh, essential uh, to my role uh, in, in numerous ways. Uh, with regards to uh, fellowship, being able to really allow uh, oneself to interact with uh, leaders in the field, individuals that you I really wouldn't have been able to engage with, 
college really breaks down those barriers. I mean, you're all fellows together. You all have the same challenges and you have that opportunity to really interact with those, some of those leaders uh, that you wouldn't really expect to otherwise. And as I um, need to keep up to date with my educational uh, efforts. The college provides exactly those uh, venues as well to make sure that I'm up to date with exactly those areas that have advanced over time. How have you guys championed the ACS fellowship at your institution and within your subspecialty particularly, since we're trying to focus on subspecialty involvement and engagement? You get to interact with people and network with people, which is an incredibly important part at, at any stage in your career. I think the pandemic really brought out the importance of the college to a lot of our subspecialties. You know, we are um, big in our specialty, but when you think about the larger practice of surgery in this country, we need a singular voice when it comes to advocating for surgeons. And that is really where the college comes shining through and developing these amazing quality programs, developing global surgery opportunities, um, advocating for us on, on Capitol Hill. Um, and or um, bringing us, um, you know, timely information about things uh, regarding the pandemic and when to stop operating, when to cancel elective surgeries. All of that was hugely important um, for me to be able to go to my administration at my hospital and say, listen, the college says it's time to stop elective surgery. And that's, you know, that's what we're going to do in colorectal. Um, and so it, I, I think um, in my specialty, it's, it's always been um yeah, it's something that's highly recommended amongst our members uh, to become a fellow. And I think now more than ever, it's become really apparent why that, um, why that connection is, is so critical to people's careers and, and practice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here uh, as well. I'm an unabashed cheerleader for the college, uh, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I, I uh, try to talk about it to whoever I, I can uh, in my department. And particularly, I, I speak about it quite openly with residents in particular. Uh, RAS and the Resident Associate Society, which uh, I know that you're quite familiar with, uh, I think is a great venue uh, for uh, surgical trainees to uh, become involved and uh, really engage with the college in a very early manner with really low barriers uh, to uh, getting involved, uh, whether that's um, beginning involved in a committee or um, attending the Leadership and Advocacy Summit on a scholarship or getting involved in the local chapter. I think there's just so many opportunities to become engaged. And I really think it's eye-opening uh, when you become engaged in the college and realize uh, that you're outside of that silo of your residency program, which is very easy to just be very insular and not really think of anything outside of your residency program, uh, to really see what opportunities are out there. So I'm very much a, a huge fan. I, I think there are a lot of uh, fellows who um, don't realize uh, what, all, what all those opportunities could be and uh, that their involvement is really uh, sought out. So what would you tell your 20 year old self at the beginning of your career about fellowship in ACS? Knowing what I know now, I, I think I wish I would have been more involved, maybe like Dr. Kilgore's involved and you're getting involved um, in doing more um, stuff with the college because uh, it, it, it's now the stuff that I'm doing, I really enjoyed meeting my colleagues across the country. Um, I very much enjoy hearing what's going on and learning about best practices. Um, as I got more involved, I was able to get more mentors and sponsors outside of my specialty, which has been really important to me as a woman. Some may know I've been was really involved in the Resident Associate Society. Now I'm um, the chair of the Young Fellows Association, and and really realizing how uh, open the college is for input uh, is really remarkable. Where whether it has to do with parental leave issues in regards to diversity, um, um, what gun violence. Uh, we're working on now on, on statements regards to um, looking at how to make sure that as we go back to in-person meetings, making sure that they're inclusive uh, and really consider all aspects of what that uh, means. And most recently, the college just uh, put out a new statement with regard to restrictive covenants, which is really important uh, for younger surgeons since most of us are employed. Uh, so I, I really did not realize uh, how uh, open and able we were to help guide the college because it is our, our college. Um, back then I would have just thought, well, there are these folks that make decisions for us and you know that's the way it is. Um, but uh, what I've realized over time is it's really quite different than that. Uh, and there's really an opportunity to make the college uh, really reflect uh, the things that we care about. That's great. 
So to kind of, you know, final, final question of the interview is what are three takeaways for our surgeon colleagues on how they can address their career path and membership in the American College of Surgeons? One, definitely become a member. I mean, uh, there's no question that um, you're going to benefit from this. Two, um, think about the things that are most important to you. And I'm sure you're going to find that those things exist within the college. Um, in some way, shape, or form, there is going to be some um, connection to your interests in the college. And then develop it. I, I, within the college, there's a, such great opportunity and there's such a need, um, as Dr. Mammon said, for people's input um, and, and helping direct uh, what we do. Uh, and I guess the last thing I would say is um, to think locally um, and, and bring it to the national level as you do your own specialty and, uh, and think about how you can contribute and, and what you can bring back to your local community. So the first thing I, I would say is uh, really kind of building on uh, what Dr. Ramamurthy uh, was mentioning about the uh, local uh, aspects. I think the state chapters are, or the chapters in general, because some states have more than one chapter, are really hidden gems uh, that uh, we often don't think about. Uh, and I think it's a great opportunity to get involved uh, without having to travel a whole lot. Um, for individuals that are new to a state, I'm new to Nebraska, you know, I, I got to tell you, I joined my no local chapter immediately because I know that's a way for me to network, meet other individuals, uh, don't even have to travel very far uh, in order to, to meet them. And, and so I really encourage folks to really think about the local chapters for residents and medical students. It's a place where you can present uh, your work. It counts on your CV. The second is I encourage folks to apply for committee positions and liaison positions, regardless of whether you're a medical student resident, a uh, young fellow, or um, you know, a fellow without any of those designations, because those committees are really open. I think the college needs input uh, from a vari wide variety of stakeholders. Uh, and without that input, it really can't make all the right decisions necessarily. And I, I think that it'd be good to get as much input uh, as, as possible. And the third has to do with uh, advocacy. Um, I, I think that we as physicians had, at least in the past, been taught not to talk about money. Uh, don't talk about how we need to, um, you know, discuss politics or all those type of things. But we've been really kind of taboo subjects. And I think we've suffered a little bit because I don't think that uh, other interests in healthcare have been as reluctant to talk about uh, their self-interests, uh, whether that be hospitals or pharmaceutical companies or other stakeholders like that. And I think if we really want to do what's best for our patients, I think we need to talk about the barriers that we have in providing the best possible uh, surgical care. And so whether that's contributing to the PAC or it's participating in leadership and advocacy days, which you can even do virtually nowadays, uh, I, I think those type of things are really, really important because I think unless our voices are heard, folks will assume that there isn't a problem uh, and that uh, other voices uh, are really then take the uh, forefront of those issues. Uh, so those would be my kind of three main uh, takeaways. Those are all great takeaways. Thank you all so much for participating in this interview. I think that you guys made some excellent points for medical students, residents, young fellows. I think, you know, on the whole spectrum, especially, you know, just get involved. I feel like that was your overarching goal. Just get involved, be present. The college has so many great resources for everyone um, of all different training levels and career levels. So um, thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedules. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to share this information with our members. Thank you, Dr. Kilgore. Thank you. Thank you.